Hello and welcome to to the weather update. It's 9:30 on the 4th of January. Record heat today, record warmth once again. Absolutely crazy. Central Park tied their record of 66. LaGuardia tied their record of 66 as well. And Islip set a new record, uh, 65, which broke the old record of 64 from 1998. Uh, so this is a look at the observed high temperatures today. Uh, and again, just very warm. Look at Connecticut avoided a lot of that warmth. But and then that really warm out there for Farmingdale, 65. It was very warm uh, out there. Uh, just really crazy warmth. Uh, just another sign of the climate crisis that we're dealing with. And there's been severe weather in the south. Uh, there's actually been flight delays. Uh, it's calmed. It looks like it's calmed down now a little bit in the south. But there was some a lot of thunderstorms la last night. There was severe weather. The night before there was severe weather. Looking at our area, uh, you could see some of the showers are exiting. We haven't really we really get that much rain today. Uh, looks like so we, at least we dodged the bullet with all the rain. Uh, but California is getting ready for another storm. Uh, for sure. Oh, here's the here here are the storms right here. So it looks like. Some thunderstorms about to move into Tampa. Um, but, uh, yeah, really just um, crazy, crazy weather. Absolutely insane weather. Uh, and let's look at the... So, uh, you can see in California, we've got a high wind warning until 4 p.m. tomorrow. So, it's going to be a big storm coming into California. This is our, our satellite right now. You can see the clouds. And it looks like maybe some clearing. Maybe we'll try to get in. I, I have no idea. I have no idea at all. Uh, but let's go to the Kona's view, and we could show you. Actually, let's go to the West Coast view. That that because you can't really see it too well. This is the storm that's over us right now. You can see the big comma there. Uh, but let's go to the West Coast here. Um, and let's go to the U.S. Pacific Coast. You get a look at this next storm coming in. So here you go. Look at that. Look at that atmospheric river coming in right there. There it is, right there. That's what they call it, an atmospheric river. If you will. Uh, Look again at the radar. Hey, there should be something on the radar. Why is this radar not showing anything? That's odd. Oh, there it is. So, uh, wow. Yeah, it's a big slug of moisture there coming into California. So, uh, the drought in the west is over, but it's ending. And, again, you get all the rain in just one uh, week, it seems. And, again, this is going to – it's actually bringing a lot of snow to the high mountains. Uh, but you can see flooding, power outages. This is the kind of stuff that's going to occur – uh, from these atmospheric rivers. They're becoming more and more common again due to climate change. Warmer than normal oceans, more energy in the atmosphere, more moisture in the atmosphere, bigger storms. doesn't take a rocket science a scientist to figure that out. Uh, let's go to the MODIS satellite, get a look at this as well. Uh, so look at that storm. Wow, that's a monster right there. Yeah, that's a monster. So you can see the atmospheric river right there uh, that you have. There it is. There's the river coming right from the tropical Pacific all the way into California right there. There it is right there. What a storm that is. Wow, what a storm. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the conditions in California. And I, we will go to our area, but it, what happens there affects us in the, you know, eventually. Um, so let's see what we've got, the conditions we've got going on right now out there, if we can load the observations. Uh, so, yeah, look at some of these conditions. A 54-mile-an-hour wind gust. Off out of San Francisco. Oh my God, a 67 mile an hour wind gust at Hernandez, south of 30, gusting to 67. Wow, that's incredible. 42 mile an hour wind gust at Branch Mountain. So, on the mountains in particular, look at this 40 uh, mile an hour wind gust. So, this is going to cause a lot of power outages as well and heavy rain uh, that's going to come in. Uh, that's incredible, incredible winds right there. Uh, so, let's go into our area. At least we won't, we're not going to be dealing with that kind of weather. Uh, we just dealt with a ridiculously warm day. Temperatures have dropped now uh, compared to what they were earlier. Uh, Jersey not really has dropped as much, but uh, let's take a look at ice slip. So 52, dew point 52. It's humid out there. We're dealing with humidity too, of course, which is kind of unusual to see. Uh, and you'll see here, again, look at how high those temperatures got, 60, 60s. Uh, but it did cool down in the, later in the afternoon, around 2, 3 o'clock. The winds became south the southeast Italy. And I actually was in Long Beach where it was a lot cooler huh? <laughs> uh, because it was really, I mean, I was out of here. It was warm in the middle of the day. Uh, and these are just the airport readings. I want to go on with some of the wind to ground readings too as well. Um, if you're in Jersey, I'm sure it was a lot worse. Let's see what it was like in Berkeley Township. Why do I have a feeling they might have hit 70? Let's see. Did they hit 70 today? Oh, yes, they did. 
Yes, they 69. Oh, don't tell me they just got shy of it. 69. My God, it's hot in Jersey. Jeez, Louise. Okay, uh, let's... And that's with humidity. So let's uh, go and take a look at the highs. Put this on the map right here. Uh, so you can see over Long Island, six, generally mid-60s, 66 at the quad, yeah. So mid-60s generally on Long Island. Even on the South Shore, Sea Breeze wasn't that strong. But yeah, look at Jersey. Oh yeah, there you go. 70 in Tom's River. Just south of Tom's River there. 69 in Bayville. So very warm in Jersey. So still a lot warmer in Jersey than it was here. Even though we had that westerly flow. There was enough of a sea breeze to help us out a little bit. At least even in, uh, it looks like even Mineola might have avoided that kind of warmth. I see a 64 in Old Brookville. So um, yeah, so quite a warm day. Just incredible. So we're going to go to the Wonder Ground now. We're going to look at what the conditions were in London ground here. You can still see the warmth over here. Look at all the warmth over here. It's almost like a little bit of a backdoor front is trying to come through to Long Island. You see why I don't want to wind up having to go living now. If you like the heat, well, New Jersey's the place for you. That's why that's where their hockey team is called the Devils because it's hot as hell. But uh, for those of us who don't like the heat, it's not not a good place to be. And I don't like the heat. And it's only going to get hotter as we deal with more and more climate change. We're talking about heat, and it's January. What is wrong with this picture? Uh, so let's take a look and see what what we have here. So 59 in Searing. That's a Searing town. But we'll take a look and see what they got up to today. And then I'll show you what it was like on the South Shore. So 66. Yeah, that's about right. 66. You can see we peaked right around that noon hour. It was already in the 60s as of 10 a.m., but 60s. And then it started dropping off toward, more toward 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Started dropping off a little more. Um, and there you go. So, yeah. So it's, But you can see, you, you, because we got a little bit of a sea breeze coming through in that rain, we had a little bit of light rain. But so now let's compare it to the South Shore. And I'm going to look at, let's go look at Island Park. And when it says North Lindbrook, I don't think that's North Lindbrook. Uh, but we'll see how warm they got. Because I'll tell you, I was in Long Beach, and it was still, you could still walk around without, uh, that site's not working right. You could walk around without a shirt, without a, uh, not without a shirt, but without a jacket in Long Beach. Uh, uh, today. So let's see, 51. So right now the current temperature. So 57, it was a lot cooler there. But it was still got to the upper 50s, but it was a lot cooler. It was much more of a sea breeze. But it was mainly right along the beach, because I think even if you go into Rockville Center, it probably got into the 60s there. Let's take a look and see what the... Uh, they got up to, uh, yeah, 63, so slightly cooler than Mineola, but it was definitely a little warmer there uh, versus Long Beach, which you had to be right on the water to really feel the effect of that sea breeze for sure, and uh, even way out in Suffolk, they got into the 60s. So now that we've discussed all this other stuff going on here, and it's just it's just crazy again. This is, again, the atmospheric river that is, uh, that is hitting California right now. Actually, I want to see... How the, how the power out situation is because I have a feeling power California's probably got a shade of color on it with those winds there and their power grid is not very good it's worse than ours believe it or not all right well that's not loading yet so uh, let's go to the models here um, and we'll go over to the models and uh, we'll take a look and see what's we have so again here's your low press system uh, high over there so it's gonna keep the chance for showers around Slight chance tomorrow. I think it's going to be mostly a dry day, maybe some clouds, and then we have another little chance of showers early, early Friday, but nothing really heavy with a little weak low. And then the high, a weak high tries to build in for the weekend, so it'll give us dry weather, but we will have some clouds. And then we have to watch for this storm system here, weak storm system passing the south, which may give us some mixed precipita precipitation Sunday into Monday, and then um, as we go into next week. Uh, you see, we have, the models keep going back and forth with the storm. This particular run has a pretty strong high uh, suppressing this storm off to the south. Uh, so we wouldn't get any snow, but you can see it's definitely going to bring down some cold air with those isobars. Uh, just going to the long range a little bit here. I'm probably going to discuss it a little more tomorrow. Um, but the previous run of the model, if we look at the 12Z, gives us a blizzard. So just, now for those who want a, a blizzard or a fantasy storm... Uh, this uh, this is this is your fantasy storm, right? Maybe it won't be a fantasy. We'll have to see. Uh, but that could be a pretty big snowfall if that. Now look at how deep that low is. That would be one monster storm right there. I mean, uh, if we look at the winds here, 
And again, this is a ways off, so just keep that in mind. A look at those winds. Uh, this would be one monstrous storm, uh, really intense storm. And again, if you looked at the total snowfall that it would deliver, let's take a look. We probably could see eight, eight inches to a foot of snow from this if it were to hit us. But of course, that's the 12Z run. Go to the 18Z run, it's more or less gone. So, um, yeah. Uh, so well, it's it's too far out to really say anything. I don't want to really, you know, go focus on that too much. Let's go to the shorter range things, and we'll go to the zero Z H triple R and start looking at uh, our rain chances as we go through the night. So slight chances for rain, slight, and I mean slight. I don't think we're going to see rain tomorrow. Um, I mean, nothing more than maybe an isolated sprinkle. Uh, it's later tomorrow night into Friday morning that we'll have a slight chance of some showers. Very light, looks very a very light chance of showers, very small chance of showers. The good news is the humidity and the ridiculous warmth is out of here. Uh, so as we go into tomorrow, the winds do go become, first they're easterly, and then there is, it's a very interesting little thing that happens tomorrow. It's like almost like a backdoor front that'll try to park itself over Long Island. But if you're in New Jersey, um, you may be still dealing with a little warm air. Drier, yes, but still a little warm. You can see the tent. But then the winds become more easterly uh, for, and that, that'll probably bring the back to a front through New Jersey. And then uh, as we go into Friday, you see that drier air working in. But now when you look at the temperatures, you'll see what I mean with this back to a front. So take a look at tomorrow. So while we're much cooler on Long Island, upper 40s, uh, still above normal. Look at Jersey, still dealing with... Um, Unless you're like right near the border of, uh, you know, right the Hudson River there, you're going to be dealing with temperatures probably 60 or better. Um, you know, Long Island will probably be dealing with temperatures in the upper 40s. So again, another warm day on tap for you in Jersey, but it'll feel a little more January-like, but still not like January at all over Long Island. And then uh, as we go into Friday, you'll see much more typical temperatures. The temperatures generally in the mid 40s, still a little bit above normal, but Definitely a lot more seasonable compared to what we've been dealing with. Um, now, and we're going to go to the GFS here for a moment. Um, well, let's, let's go to the GFS. Uh, so this is the GFS looking at our air temperatures. Again, as we head into the weekend, you'll see temperatures drop even more. Temperatures in the low 40s for Saturday, Sunday, maybe even upper 30s. Uh, and again, we have that storm system passing to the south. You can kind of see its reflection here, so it'll keep the temperatures lower uh, with the clouds around probably, so may not make it out of the upper 30s on Monday. No big warm-ups anymore. So Tuesday, we'll see uh, temperatures ri rise a little bit, but then here comes a more substantial cold front. Here we are Wednesday, uh, and the cold front is moving through, and temperatures may be dropping through the 30s and we go into the teens, and then we have a little more like a little more cold air here. Not Arctic air, but it's Canadian air that's coming straight down from Canada. So it'll be cold, and we may not make it out of the 20s. Uh, so it could be another cold one on Thursday. And then for Friday, uh, we start seeing it retreat a little bit. Um, but again, this is a ways off, and it, always dep it all depends on that storm that's hanging out there. After that, you can see definitely colder temperatures, but still... It looks like it's trying to bring another warm up into the area, so still no really, no Arctic air outbreaks, um, to speak of. Uh, but uh, that was our chance of snow. But we'll have to see. That's a ways, ways, ways out. Uh, so now let's talk about the skies and when we will see blue sky again because we've been having a lot of clouds around, and unfortunately, uh, I think that might continue. So here we are. This is the regular GFS. Tomorrow, I know it looked like it was going to try to clear it out over Jersey. I have my doubts. Maybe a little bit of a hazy sunshine, maybe like today. Uh, but as far as nice skies go, you're going to have to wait. Friday, that's not going to happen with that weak low moving through. Saturday, we start off clear, but then the clouds come back in on us later in the afternoon. Uh, Sunday, we start off clear, and then the clouds come back in again. So, unfortunately, it's kind of pattern wind because we're in that sort of zonal pattern where one system is always right behind the other. Uh, and we don't really clear this out until possibly uh, maybe Thursday we clear it out a little bit. Um, so that's a ways away. And this is, the, again, the GFS, which is a lower resolution model, a regular GFS. I can look at, I have to look at a 12Z run of the of the FV3 here. But again, it kind of shows you the clouds kind of stick around tomorrow. 
So, you know, this actually wants to clear it out in the afternoon over Long Island. We'll have to see if we actually get that lucky or not. Uh, for Friday, you'll see a lot more clouds around. Um, and then and then by the evening, it'll clear out. But then the problem is, again, if I look at the RGEM, which is our other cloud model here. Here's the RGEM for tomorrow. And again, plenty of clouds around. It doesn't clear it out at all. Friday, more clouds. Saturday, more clouds. And maybe Sunday, maybe. Uh, so it's, it's really hard to get a nice clear sky when you're in this type of zonal pattern. It just makes it very hard because this is one system after another. There's no big ridge of high pressure to keep the clouds away, uh, to keep that, you know, to get a nice clear sky. Um, so I'm going to go right back out to the Konas view here, and I want to switch this over to the European model here and go to the Konas view. Um, and I'm just curious to see what the European has for next week uh, as far as some of these other storms go. All right, so there's your weak high pressure, another high pressure. The European also seems to suppress that storm system down, and it keeps that high pressure in place. And then forms another one, and it also goes to the south. So we'll have to see what happens. It's really hard to say uh, how this is all going to work out because there's just it's just too far in in the distance. It all depends on these systems coming in from California and how it is. But right now it's showing more of a suppression because, again, if we go to the upper level winds here, 250 MB wind, you'll see that trough is pretty deep. All right. Um, and if you go into the GFS, you also see the G actually the GFS trough is the timing's a little different on these troughs, but um, they're deep. All right. And they're deep and they're not in the right way to really generate something. But I am seeing troughiness, which is good. This is encouraging. This is encouraging to see some troughiness here. Um, and that could, you know, when the, that reflects probably down here. But you see the troughiness, but no really bitterly cold air. It's not connecting up because, again, let me go back to the jet stream here. And we go back and we go up to the North American view. All right. So the problem is here is that you don't have that cross polar flow. Look at you don't have that flow. You have that flow coming into the Pacific. You're not having that cross polar flow. There's a special thing that has to happen to get that Arctic air to come down. And again, if we look at the temperature anomaly chart on this, you'll see eastern Canada is above normal. In fact, much is above normal. You'd have to go to the hemispheric view and it'll kind of explain to you what's happening. So I'll go to the hemispheric view. Um, Explain to you why we're not seeing what well, really isn't much Arctic air. I don't see a big temperature anomalies anywhere here. Any big negative temperature anomalies anywhere. There's some over Siberia. You see, there's some over there, but then it kind of just dissipates. It doesn't. It doesn't come down at all. Uh, and this again all goes down to this. Now we go to this. This is one more thing we need to look at here, because that's your. It's just a very zonal pattern. You see that. It's just very zonal. Um, um, you know, you see all that. The cold air is really just not a whole lot of it, and there's no split in the polar vortex at all to allow that cold air. So yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to see any big Arctic outbreaks is what I'm saying when I'm trying to explain to you. So, um, But we'll at least see temperatures cool down and maybe some days where temperatures don't make it to freezing. But no, no really big Arctic outbreaks are forecast right now. For those who hate the cold... I'm sure they're celebrating, uh, but for the but just remember, so are the southern pine beetles. They're celebrating too, so that's not a good thing. So, and all the other insect pests that are trying to make it into this country, including they caught some insect pests that were in some fruit. Um, so that's going to wrap up this weather update. A lot to explain here. Uh, just craziness in the atmosphere. Just people, most people just aren't aware. Power outage map has loaded. Oh yeah, look at California already. 154,929 outages. That's going to grow with those winds and the rain. So, again, we're dealing with a planet in crisis as we deal with the number one thing issue facing humanity, facing every creature on this planet, and that is the climate crisis, uh, despite what the news may tell you, because, again, they are not going to talk about that. Uh, not in the United States anyway. Other news, they do talk about it, but not, not in the United States. The media here does not want to talk about the climate crisis. But I will. That's something I'm going to continue to do. So thank you for watching and have a good night.